Welcome, everybody, to From Lab to Market, a showcase of research impact through commercialization. So, as Louise um, introduced our Concafia intervention, we had gone down the traditional research path, and we were looking around for how do we actually sustain this in the longer term? We thought about how we can train uh, psychologists to try and build the workforce. Uh, we thought about um, building an online program. So we were very much in that research frame of mind when out of the blue, a company called Blue Note Therapeutics from the US contacted us. Um, they approached us in March 2020, and they said that they had seen us at academic conferences presenting on Concafia for fear of cancer recurrence. And they were a startup that was funded through venture capital, um, and they were looking to develop evidence-based, cancer-specific apps for mental health treatments, and they were really interested in what we were doing. When they came to us, we were a little bit skeptical, to be fair. We, weren't, we didn't know them, um, and their product pipeline was one cancer-related distress app that was in development. They were also uh, working with the FDA to try and get proof of concept approval for app-based cancer mental health treatments. So, you know, there was a little bit of doubt and thinking maybe they were a bit sketchy. We then started to talk to them um, what they wanted, where they wanted to go, and a partnership emerged. They were interested in the content and all of the resources that we had developed for our psychologist-led um, cancer intervention. Um, and they were also interested in some initial work that we had been doing to develop the online component. They wanted everything, and they were open to discussions. However, as Louise um, highlighted, this was a program of work that was 10 years in the making. We had 12 investigators from nine academic institutions. We had two administrating institutions, one that was doing Concafia, one that was doing iConcafia. And before we could even start to negotiate with Blue Note, we had to negotiate with our collaborators, which actually was quite an event. Um, basically, lots of backwards and forwards between the University of New South Wales and UCID to who was going to lead the licensing, how we were going to dis distribute the, uh, the fees that we might generate. Um, we ended up with an equal split across 12 um, inventors, even though that not all of them had contributed the same amount of IP. Um, I think it was just uh, we ended up doing that because it was the easiest option. There was also lots of considerations that the, um, the investigators had. We come from a very um, universal healthcare perspective. So something that was going to be fee-for-service was really quite foreign to us. So we had to work through that. There was Blue Note as a startup. What would happen if they got taken over or they were a bit, um, you know, dodgy on the, you know, with what, with what we had really nurtured for 10 years? We wanted to maintain our research. We wanted access to their, um, their product for further research. So all of these considerations really went into the Blue Note uh, licensing agreement. And they were really open to all of our fears and, and concerns. So what we ended up with was a limited license. So we gave them a license for North America. They wanted the world, we gave them North America. In all of our licensing agreements, Australia is excluded, so we maintain everything here so it can be used free of service, free, without free, fee for service. Um, we wrote in sub licensing, it's a startup, it might get taken over, they might actually try and on sell the product. We built in around protections around that so that wouldn't um, affect us locally. We actually front-loaded the, the payment schedule. Because they are a startup, they might fall over. We may never get royalties, but they were open to that. And so, you know, we've got the licensing upfront payments. So if it doesn't work, we're still, our intellectual property has still been of value. Um, we've talked to them about ongoing um, and access 
and continued evaluation. This hasn't quite played out yet. We're still in the development stage, but we're hoping that we're going to have access in Australia to the app that can be used in public health system. Um, and they, they seem to be open about that, but we'll, we'll wait and see once we actually have the product finalised. All of this actually ended up taking us two years to get to an executed agreement. And I, I have to say, they were quite um, patient for, uh, for all of this to happen. So this has been a really interesting journey for us. It's not something that we thought we would ever be doing. It's not something that in, in cancer-related mental health is a common instance. So there were a lot of lessons learned. One of the main ones is clarifying IP up front. Collaborations are big, but actually we need to think about if we're going to commercialise, how we get that IP centralised early. There's ongoing issues with managing the research team's expectations. There's legal requirements that uh, licensing agreements have in place. And so when you're thinking about collaborations, we have to actually make sure that the collaborations don't have a commercial arm associated with them, particularly if we're talking about international collaborations and where that's going to go, where that research is going to go post the research project. Have to manage the expectations of financial reimbursements. This isn't the cash cow that people think it is. Um, you know, we have 12 investigators. There's not a lot of money to go around. <laughs> Um, and then we really have to think about, we can advise our commercial partners on the best case uh, forward, but we actually don't have that much influence over the commercial outcomes. That's their business, that's what they know, and we need to respect the mutual um, competencies of our partners. Right. So thank you. <laughs>